bop, boop. Disney is getting high tech. They're going to use uh-huh. robots to spell check scripts for gender bias. They're going to data mine. They're going totally high tech on us. Skynet is now. Skynet is now. It's MouseNet. 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 Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about that. And this this is just, I mean, this is a whole nother level. I mean, I, honest to God, this could have been the headline for an Onion article. <laughs> it uh, could have been. It could have been. But uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Disney partnering with Gina Davis to spell check their scripts for gender bias using an AI program. Right. To make sure that these these scripts that Disney produces pass the Bechtel test. It's just funny because we're like, we want to avoid stereotyping. But as I've seen lately, this kind of stuff creates more stereotyping. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, God. And then we're going to talk about how Disney reached a deal with uh, this big, big ad agency. And people are concerned because this big ad agency knows a lot about a lot of people. Pretty much everybody in the U.S., and uh, they're afraid that Disney is going to sort of become the next Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's interesting, too. So before we get into the video, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. Of course, we talk about Disney because Disney owns like three quarters of pop culture now. Yeah, it seems that way. Can't avoid it. Can't avoid it. So uh, we hit 67,000 subs. Thank you for that. We're hoping to hit 100,000 soon. And um, I'm sure Disney's listening to this with their little mouse robots. Mm, well, they're, they're mining us for information. They're mining us. Uh, they're mining We're us. We're on so the naughty list. We are on the naughty list, I think. I think we are. Uh, okay, so this is coming from the Hollywood Report. We had uh, several people uh, tagged us on Twitter and, and told us about this story. Yeah, this is something. This is something. This is something. I didn't even know this was a thing. This actually came out over a week ago. But uh, Gina Davis unveils partnership with Disney to spell check scripts for gender bias. So Gina Davis, the Oscar winning actor and tireless advocate for female representation and She-Ra actress. Yeah, whatever. Was it uh, was it the Power of Inclusion Summit? Oh, imagine that. In New Zealand. Central to her presentation was the revelation that her Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media has partnered with Walt Disney Studios to deploy a new digital tool that uses AI technology to assess film and television scripts for gender bias. Yeah, look, I am 100% on board with diversity and things like that, you know, within reason. I think where it, if it's story first and things are story driven and they just happen to have diverse characters, it works. What happens is, and what happens with things like this, and we've seen it with like She-Ra and different things, when you're just inserting things because you want to make sure you hit different diversity check boxes, the stories suffer and it's more about an agenda than it is about a story. And something like this, I worry, is going to lead to just, you know, because they're even saying the technology can also discern the numbers of characters who are people of color, LGBTQ, is that I? I don't yeah. even know anymore. Possess disabilities or belong to other groups typically underrepresented. If you were going to represent every person who doesn't get represented, there's a shit ton of people that aren't going to get represented because you cannot possibly represent everybody and everything. And what happens is then you then it's it's this one giant checkbox, not a good story. If you can do a good story, then by all means do so. I, I thought this was I thought this was an Onion article. They're like Gina Davis is going to use an AI because you know they joke about these AIs that are writing scripts in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and the scripts are terrible. They're absolutely terrible. So now they're going to. So I thought, well, this is a joke. This is the joke. Gina Davis has her own her own program to, to check these scripts. Okay, I have to talk about this for a minute. Named GDIQ spell check for bias. <laughs> GDIQ. The, new, the new tool leverages patent and machine learning technology developed at the University of Southern California. Uh, Viterbi School, I don't know how you say that, of engineering, to rapidly analyze the text of a script to determine its number of male and female characters and whether they are representative of the real population at large, as well as discerning the number of all these underrepresented groups. If it's going to be based on actual comparatively to the male and female at, at large to comparatively to the people of these populations, um, then it's going to be very interesting because a lot of times these groups that aren't represented as much are probably not represented as much because they're a small group. And not saying that they shouldn't be represented, they totally should. But what I'm saying is, um, if they were rep- they're overly represented sometimes. If they're representing it according to their their percentage in the real world, things like She-Ra does not actually reflect percentages of the real world. <laughs> so, well, speaking of the real world, this is this is what's interesting about you know everybody jokes about. 
uh, NPCs, mm -hmm. right? Like robots. Right? This this is, is this is robot. We're literally letting a robot decide whether or not a script passes uh, a litmus test decided upon by Gina Davis and friends. And her foundation, which has a clear agenda to begin with. Uh, I mean, isn't that kind of scary? I mean, you can't tell stories unless it fits within their check boxes. And here's the thing: Gina Davis says it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, she said, "I'm very proud to announce we have a brand new partnership with Disney." She said, "There are pilot partners, so Disney's the first one to jump on board. Well, We're going to collaborate with Disney over the next year, using this tool to help their decision making, identify opportunities to increase diversity and inclusion in the manuscripts they receive." We're very excited about the possibilities with this new technology, and we encourage everybody to get in touch with us and give it a try. Let ev everybody, you need to let our robot decide whether or not your script- And lead your stories. It, it passes muster. So it's so along with rapidly tallying the genders and ethnicities of characters, spell check for bias can assess the number of speaking lines the various groups have, the level of sophistication of the vocabulary they use, and the relative social status or positions of power assigned to the characters by group. Oh so, my God. So let me get this straight. This is kind of, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like the HR robots where people are not getting jobs because they're not saying the right thing on the resume. What's gonna happen is screenwriters are gonna turn in scripts or try to pitch something to a studio. And if it doesn't, you know, make the robot happy, it's going to get kicked out. Even because, if it was really good. Because it's not diverse enough according to a freaking robot. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be an ass here. I, there, I think that there, diversity needs to be something that's addressing. There needs to be more diversity. I agree. Especially people of, I think, but that are, you know, differently able to handicapped or whatever. I think they definitely don't see enough of that in, in shows. There definitely has to be this. However, however... When you're just, when it's going around, just making sure that every every group has representation and everybody gets to say something, that everybody's gonna have like one word because you cannot possibly represent every ethnicity, every sexual orientation, every religion, every, you know, handicap, every whatever. And th th when you do this, it's gonna it seriously limit what stories you can tell. I, I just can't, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this, right? We're talking about, we're still talking about the creative arts. We're still talking about entertainment. We're still talking about making humans, making art. At the end of the day, even with all the Hollywood involved and all that junk, it's still supposed to be about humans making art. And we're going to let a robot decide whether or not that art is sufficient, whether or not that art proceeds to, to get made. I mean, this reminds me of a lot of what's going on with, with publishing even, mm -hmm. where, where they get manuscripts and you have people going over the manuscripts and deciding whether or not the script is quote unquote diverse enough or whatever. A lot whatever. of times I'm going to be flat out blunt. If you aren't the right kind of person to begin with, they don't even probably look at it anyway. And I hate to say it, but it, I mean, being there ourselves, it, 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 we found this out firsthand. If you don't have the right amount of check boxes, you don't get looked at anyway because you aren't diverse enough. And then when they, then the books don't sell and they're like, we don't understand why we're losing money. Yeah. I'm like, well, maybe if you made books that people wanted to buy. Because, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't tell good stories with diversity. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying if story is first and it happens to be diverse, then it's a good thing. Like the Dragon Prince, for example. Story is first with a very, very diverse cast, and, it, and you know, including handicaps and everything else. And it's a wonderful story. And it's story first, so it works. When you're doing this, you're not even going to have the story first. It's going to kick it out or it's going to change the story before the story is even good just to represent. That's the problem. That's not real. That, that's going to be the problem. Davis says the goal is not to shame and blame screen creators, but rather reveal the unconscious bias that commonly manifests in even the most well-meaning screenwriters work. Bullshit. Bullshit. The purpose of this is to go through the slush pile and use a robot to determine whether or not the script is diverse enough to move on to whatever the next phase is. So the robot is going to pick out the scripts that meet the criteria, and then maybe a human will look at it. But you know what? what? I'm more worried about this anyway. Because at the end of the day, Disney's just going to constantly just reboot all their old shows. And we're not, it's not going to be anything new anyway. That's a really good point. Uh, I was going to say, Disney is, is testing the pilot program. Disney is very locked down. Like, unless you're on the inside track, you're not getting the pitch to Disney. Disney doesn't just, just take blind submissions. Like, you have to already be in the, the inside right. track. Right, you do. You have to already have someone representing you. I'm sorry, I'm breaking this ahead on this. And this, this pisses me off as a woman. 
because they're talking about how their gender bias initiative and they've been doing 15 years because women are underrepresented and blah 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 yeah okay i agree there were a lot of times women female characters were not as prevalent as male characters but it's not to the extent they keep making it out today they keep acting like they just now invented diversity which is not the truth however truth what however makes me mad about this is they're talking about G gina davis and how she you know got to play a lot of cool parts and and their mantra is if a girl girl sees it they can be it and all that like it's a new thing i'm gonna tell you this straight up that's a, that's a, up to the society and the parents because my mom my mom always told us we could be whatever we wanted to be. If we were willing to work hard enough and try hard enough, you could be whatever you want to be. She told me that since I was a little kid. My mom used to be an FBO. She used to run an airport. That I can't tell you how unheard of that was apparently back in the day, but to me it was normal. It never occurred to me that I couldn't do something and that women were, you know, weren't represented enough or any of this stuff because I was always told I could do whatever the heck I wanted to do. And I wasn't going to let somebody tell me I couldn't. So this idea that, you know, th that women were always kept down is not true. It just depends on how you look at it. And my, and I guess, and who you, who your parents were and what you were taught. But this isn't a new mantra. If a girl sees they can be it, I 100% agree. My mom told me something exactly the same years and years and years ago. It is not a new idea. Stop acting like you just invented you know, diversity, you just invented equality. It's been the fight, the good fight has been going on for a long time. Women have been represented for a long time. I just, but is this really the solution is to have a robot check over the scripts? I mean, what if a woman submits, uh, would Harry Potter, JK Rowling, most successful author in the world, if she submitted Harry Potter to the robot, I don't think the robot would pass Harry Potter. No, probably not. A lot of the movies, these are the most popular movies that, that have been out that made the most money. Most often don't pass the Bechdel test because the Bechdel test is stupid, which does not hold a point entirely. But I love this. Here's my theory of change. There's one category of gross gender inequality where the underrepresentation of women can be fixed absolutely overnight and it's on screen. What? Basically put women, I'm sorry, but uh, doing exactly the opposite is not gonna fix this situation. And something else they're talking about, and then they talk about STEM careers, okay? I wanna talk about that for a minute too. They're talking about how women and girls are interested in STEM. Okay, I'm gonna tell you to talk about this flat out as a teacher, as a mom. There are girls that are interested in STEM, yes. Totally, and for those who don't know, it's science, technology, engineering, and math. There are girls out there who are very interested in that. I support that. I think girls and more women need to go into it. But they're mad. They're like, why aren't women going into this? We don't understand why more women aren't going into this. We're making it so easy for them to go into it. Because not all women want to do that. And actually, a lot of women don't want to do that. It's not because they're, they're women. It's not because they lack something. It's just they're not interested in it. So, you know, it's great to have the door open for those girls that, you know, it really, really matters to them. A hundred percent. Go for it and take the opportunity. But they are, I've read many articles in this and they're like, why aren't more women going? Because the answer, short answer is they don't want to. So, you know, just because you have it there, have it there. But understand that just because you open the door doesn't mean that everybody wants that. So Gina Davis's point is that you can't have female CEOs overnight. But if you show women on screen as scientists working in STEM careers um, in movies, then it's going to happen in real life. It's already happening in real life. But the reason there aren't a lot of women going into it is because like they, I've read article on, after article on this. They're like, why aren't women doing it? Because they don't want to. The ones that do are taking advantage. And for those women, you know, go for it. By all means, do it. I'm 100% for you going and doing it. More women CEOs? Hell yeah, if they've earned the right to be there, they should get the job. 100% for it. But I'm not to, not to the exclusion of everything else. And, you know, speaking of this, they're talking about this kind of thing. What I worry about this kind of thing with, this, with their AI is they're talking about stereotyping. I think this is going to... Oh, there's upset with stereotypes. This is going to cause stereotypes. Because what we've seen over and over again recently is everybody screaming about stereotypes as they're stereotyping worse. For yeah. example, Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. Oh, he was a white guy, a white ninja. We can't have that. He's a ninja. He's got to be Asian. Because Asians are ninjas, not white people. Except um, Chuck Norris. That's the biggest damn stereotype I've ever heard in a long time. Because, you know, Snake Eyes was written by an Asian guy. He wanted it that way. But no, no, tell the Asian guy if you can't have it his way, you have to stereotype it and make it Asian. I think I would like to see them mash up this program with the screenwriter bot and see what the hell they come up with. Because the screenwriter AI 
Uh, the screenplay AI is atrocious. Oh, that's the one that that Squicking uses? Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible. It has, again, there's no human understanding. Gina Davis, you were in The Fly. Remember The Fly, how how they had to train the teleporter uh, to think like a human? And that was the problem because when they put the stuff in the teleporter, it would blow up. Yeah, you should learn from The Fly. You need that human touch. And I don't think, you know, these robots... No. I mean, a robot is the answer. That just blows my mind. Again, if you don't want to, you don't want to perpetuate the NPC stereotype, the NPC meme. But you're saying we're going to use a robot to make sure that the diversity and the gender bias is in check. And my next question is: Is Disney going to be on board with this? Because some of the things they're going to want to change it to, I don't know. If China is going to be okay with. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm totally serious. You want to know why Elsa's not going to have a girlfriend in Frozen 2? It's not because of Hollywood. It's because Hollywood answers to China, and China don't like Which that. we've been saying. Why is there going to be other Pirates movie? Probably. With Johnny Depp in it, even though they're mad. Because at the end of the day, or why they won't do one at all, is because they want Johnny Depp, and China's their biggest box office for yep. Pirates. Yep. So we've been saying this for a while. But back to the thing about stereotypes. I was like, you know, like uh, She-Ra. Oh, look at She-Ra, how it's breaking all these boundaries. We have a girl with ice power, so clearly she's got to be an Eskimo. Yeah, I know, right? Clearly. You know, I mean, it, it just, it, the, 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 it's just causing stereotypes. They're screaming about stereotypes, and they're creating stereotypes over and over and over again, and then yelling about stereotypes. Yeah. But you're right. It needs a human touch, because what happens is, when you when it's all done by this and not by, done by what's story first, this is what happens. Uh, you know, I have to wonder, though, part of me is like, is Disney trolling Gina Davis? Or they like this is the most god awful thing we've ever heard of. But we're gonna look like we're on board. We're gonna we're gonna take it. We're gonna quote unquote test it, and then we're gonna bury this thing so far down in the depths of our Burbank studios that we'll, we'll buy it and then we'll we'll just no, th dismantle it. No, they won't dismantle it. They might buy it, but it's gonna be uh in they'll just take out what they want from it. And then redo it. But anyway, we'll go to the oh, other thing God. we're going to talk about. Okay. Speaking of more robots and AI. Speaking of more robots and AI, and the publicist group uh, landed Disney as an account. And that's fine. You know, Disney's See, switching. They're all landing Disney as an account. Yeah, right. So Disney is switching up their ad agency. The thing about um, the publicists, uh, as I understand it, is that they're, they're well, uh, notorious data miners. Mm -hmm. So this well, seems... So is Disney. So yeah. So match made in heaven. This is a match made in, well... Maybe maybe the opposite of having <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so there are concerns about this. This is coming from the Times today. While the Disney publicist deal may benefit both companies, some worry that may put consumer privacy at risk. Uh, this is in essence creating a data broker division to Disney, expanding what Disney already knows, which is a it lot. It is a lot. I can tell you that. Uh, it is a lot. Um, this guy is with the uh, Center for Digital Democracy, a nonprofit consumer advoc advocacy group. You're telling your entire life history to Mickey Mouse. Disney's kingdom expanded this year. They talk about the Fox deal. Uh, they talk about it opened a new area at Disneyland called Galaxy's Edge that was the largest expansion in the park's history. <laughs> although, <laughs> although attendance was disappointing. Uh, nah, -uh. fake news. Fake news. New York Times. <laughs> fake news. Well, actually, I accused the New York Times of, of, of fake news. I know, but that is. Here All these Disney fans news. are like fake news. It's um, funny. On November 12th, the company will start uh, its challenger to Netflix. On Monday, a Twitter account for the streaming service spent nearly three hours posting a mega I thread. Saw, I didn't even go through it. I was like, there's a lot of stuff. Then Disney banned advertising from Netflix. We knew so that. We people, that. people are worried about this uh, because, yeah, starting uh, publicists walked away with Disney's media business for most of the world outside North America. In North America publicists will take charge a media strategy for the Disney Plus streaming service as well as Disney resorts and amusement parks. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so here's what is interesting um because disney has been tagging park guests at least at walt disney world with magic bands for years i was gonna mention the magic bands yeah uh the magic bands are an rfid chip that basically tracks and people are gonna be like oh my god it doesn't track everything you do it tracks damn near everything you do if you're on a ride and you use your fast pass Even it when you're in the bathroom for pity's sake they can track anybody with those things you know that's what it's for that's what the long term everybody's like oh it's just it's to make it more convenient for you of course that's how they're going to sell it to you but really they want to be able to tag everybody that goes well, to they, the parks they can want to use it so they can tag you so they can control they can control uh crowds too like they'll you know open another or something at one side of the park to try to get crowds to move over there so it's kind of crowd control but yeah i saw this uh go ahead no they're talking about some of the data that they have they, they said that uh, the company 
may very well know if you are lactose intolerant or in the market for a pickup truck with 60,000 miles, or if you're into astrology or have taken out a home equity loan, uh, they could, for example, beam a Disney Plus ad to parents who have bought a Lion King costume for their toddler. That's creepy. They have the capacity to really understand who is a likely prospect for the streaming service and where that person resides online, and they can send messages in the appropriate media to that individual. Um, it's kind of scary. It is scary. So now Disney on one hand is going to like, you know, if you happen to mention toilet paper in your house or on your look at the top of your phone, you're going to get all kinds of ads for Disney toilet paper. And on the other hand, they're going to be, you know, running, uh, they're running all the possible stories through, uh, through bots to make sure that they control exactly what kind of minorities and, and, you know, uh, underrepresented people yeah. that are included. I hope they do more handicaps, though. They, they, they really need to up the, the representation on that. Uh, he said that uh, this is a Mr. Chester from the Digital Democracy Group said, uh, he said that viewership data from the ad-free Disney Plus, including details involving children, could be passed on to Epsilon, which is part of this company. Well, clearly it said about buying a costume and then... <sighs> Uh, and they're trying to target you. It kind of reminds me of, uh, well, Google on some level. If you if you visit like Disney World site and then every damn website you go to has Disney ads on oh, it. Oh yeah, weeks, mine too. You know? I mean, that's my um, job, so I'm always getting Disney ads. So I, I don't know. It's just, it seems like they're trying to up the, their game with uh, marketing Disney Plus to people, marketing the parks to people because, you know, the, the attendance is down even though people don't want to hear it. Well, they got to watch it so they don't have like Facebook. They well, really that's what go, they got to watch it. Yeah, I think I think we're we're getting into Facebook territory here. Uh, but this uh, just I don't know, man. Uh, it's just Disney is is relying too heavily on on uh, robots. It's a little concerning. I mean, it really is, especially the, to me. This whole thing, I'm like, you're better to have real people than you are to have run through an AI program. Yeah, that's been programmed by people that you know themselves have a clear bias. Yeah. So why don't you just, you, my recommendation, honestly, Disney, is to just make good stories and then make, just make sure you have diverse uh, characters. You have characters you're already going to plan for your story. Make sure that they're just diverse in your story. I mean, that's not that hard to do. I mean, you really, you know, it's really not that hard. And stop making redheads, taking redheads away. Just stop doing that. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Was this, was this? I'm all over the place because I'm really tired. Was this, was this episode, diver it wasn't diverse enough. Uh, why wasn't it diverse enough? It was just us. And, oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, not diverse enough. Not, I'm, how long until YouTube implements something like this? Too? I don't know. I'm just getting really tired of it. I mean, do I believe that there needs to be more diversity? A hundred percent, yes. I think that we need to make sure people are represented, but there is no possible effing way to represent every group and everything. It's just not possible. And and, and if they had to make sure everybody gets gets the equal amount of speaking parts, it's like, that's, that, that's, like, that's stupid. That's just stupid. <laughs> foster family we need to be a foster family what if it's a mute child so well, I, I, I don't know i'm just saying we need to be a foster family to make sure we can stay on youtube we'll just go get uh as many kids from as many different backgrounds as we can well, i actually would take kids that's the whole story <laughs> and then we'll make so. sure we can stay we'll we'll pass the uh pass the uh, uh robotic bechdel test god I just i um, can't even you can't i mean i don't think it's gonna last too long because people because they soon they start they start losing money because the stories aren't going to be good. It's just going to be check boxes and not good stories. I mean, I'm, you can make good stories that are diverse. You totally can, Dragon Prince. I'm telling you. This is just, this is just, I mean, this has reached a whole nother level of crazy. Like Hollywood at this point, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced they have completely lost touch with reality. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I, I mean, anybody who would think this is a good idea is batshit like crazy. Like I said, Skynet is coming. It's and, coming. But, <laughs> it looks like Gina Davis. Squid King brought up a good point. They will kill you all equally, though. That's true. Uh, because of this, uh, because of this new program, there, you will be killed equally. There is no gender bias. Everybody dies the same. The same. So there is that. Right. Um, right. that's the upside of it all. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.